What's the book you bring into America this time? It's called Last Will. Okay. And the last will um, uh, means Alfred Nobel's last testament. And Alfred Nobel was a scientist, a Swedish scientist, who actually invented dynamite. And in Sweden, we're very proud of him. Um, he invented a bunch of other weapons. His father invented landmines, for example. Uh, but we are very proud of him. They started build, you know, big weapon factories that are still going. Bofors, for example. Um, and uh, he died. 1895, very lonely, very, very rich. And he donated his huge fortune in his last will to an award for those who benefited mankind the most. And this is why we have the Nobel Prizes in physics and chemistry and literature, economics, um, medicine and peace. And every year we give out these on his death day, the 10th of December. And the book starts in the big banquet hall of Stockholm City Hall, um, where the, the big banquet dinner is being held. And the chairman of the Nobel Committee and the winner of the Medicine Prize is being shot to death, to death on the dance floor. It's a great premise, but where does the story go from there? Yep. Who wants to kill the chairman of the Nobel Committee and why? Is this book part of a series or a standalone? Um, I have the same characters uh, in, from one book to another, but they're all standalones more or less. You can read them easily without having read any of the others. They are, you know, the same characters but standalones. Why using the same character all the time? I like, yeah, I like to, I like to have the same character, but I'm trying to write a different book every time. I use different perspective. I try to use different languages, and I really want my characters to develop from one book to another. Um, I don't know if I'm succeeding, but that's my goal. I heard you talk about Annika today. It seems to have a huge presence in your life. Is there like a theme in your books that emerge? Something you caught yourself saying, oh my God, that theme was already like there yeah, years ago. Well, the name Annika has been with me forever. I don't know where it comes from. Uh, I wrote books about somebody called Annika when I was eight. My doll was called, I had a big doll that was called Annika, and uh, my daughter is named Annika, and I named my character Annika. But the themes that all the Annikas are struggling with, uh, both in my previous books and in the books I'm writing now, is um, power. I mean, um, it's not the money that makes the world go around, it's power, because money is just a tool to get power. And um, What is it you like about power? What interests you so much about power? Well, it's extremely interesting. I'm not interested in having power of my own. I tried that and I didn't like it. It didn't suit me. I was the head of, uh, I was the editor-in-chief over a Morning Daily for a while. I was um, executive editor over the Channel 4 News in Sweden. I didn't like that either. Power is not for me. I don't want to have any power or responsibility over other people. I mean, power and responsibility have to go together, always. And I want to have power over, over my own life. Um, and that's why I actually quit being a boss and wanted to become a writer, to have, to have power over myself and my work and my situation. And I absolutely love it. But. Um, People are willing to do just about everything to get power. This is my experience. And I think it's fascinating. But when we talk about power, there are many different types of powers. There's many different kinds of power. Um, you can have, I mean, the political power, obviously, but then the power of money or the power of fame, um, the power of the media, which is enormous. And like any other big organization, media corporations does not like to be investigated. They hate being criticized, and this is this is why why journalists become so lousy politicians. Because as a politician, you're constantly questioned, and you have to bring, you have to negotiate, you have to have different side to sides to every story. And journalists can't do that. We are very powerful. I'm a journalist myself. We're very powerful, and we are very bad in um, handling our power at times. The books are, or Last Will is partly set at a newsroom at the tabloid in Stockholm. 
And it's like any other news organization in the Western Hemisphere. I mean, um, Swedish media and American media are very alike, uh, for example. They sometimes call Sweden the 51st state <laughs> because we, we so much want to be America. And so many big Swedish journalists have, you know, American role models and stuff like that. So um, it's about the ethics and the discussions about how to, how, how um, what is news and how we're going to cover it. So who were your role models? When I started? I meant as a journalist. Uh, well, it was a Swedish guy, actually. Um, his name was Yong Yu. And I happened to get him to know him as I grew up. <laughs> who was he? John Giu is his name, and we are actually co-owning a publishing house today. Of all the books you've written, which one is your favorite? Um, having to pick between your books is like choosing between your kids, you know? But I'll do it anyway. <laughs> actually, I do like the non-fiction books that I've written the most. Um, What's the title of the book? They're called There's a Special Place in Hell for Women Who Don't Help Each Other. And that's true. And you don't want to go there. Uh, it's Madeleine Albright who said that. And I borrowed her quote for the title of a book that I wrote together with a friend. And um, I have another nonfiction book called uh, New Voices Sing Old Songs, which is journalistic stuff. Okay. That I really enjoyed, but it's, I mean, they're not as fun to read uh, as the bloody mystery murder novels that I normally write. Are you a dark person? I am pitch black. 